Are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 29. We're going to begin in just a moment with verse 1. And I have entitled this message today, Water Immersion. Why is it important to the New Covenant believers? So we're going to start off by looking in the Torah at some examples of where water was used to accomplish ritual purity and set apartness and a changing of status. And then we're going to go into the good news accounts and the writings of the emissaries. And our focus today is going to be upon why water immersion is so important to New Covenant believers. And so let's begin with Exodus chapter 29, beginning with verse 1. It says, And this is the task you shall do to them. So this is Yah speaking to Moshe concerning Aharon and his sons. To set them apart to serve me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams, perfect ones, and unleavened bread, and unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. Make these of wheat flour, and you shall put them in one basket, and bring them in the basket along with the bull and the two rams. Then you shall bring Aharon and his sons to the door of the tent of appointment, and wash them with water. And so we see here that water is being used to bring about ritual purity, to bring about set-apartness, setting these men apart to the service of Elohim, and to change their status from just being common men to becoming priests of the Most High El. And yes, this is a picture. This points to New Covenant believers, when we are water immersed, then we become pure in the eyes of Elohim. We are set apart unto Him, and we become priests of the Most High Ale. And then I want to take you over to Leviticus chapter 16, and we'll begin with verse 2. And this is going to talk about the fact that the high priest bathes himself in water on Yom Ha Kippurim, before he's able to enter in to the most set-apart place. Leviticus 16, beginning with verse 2. And Yah said to Moshe, Speak to Aharon, your brother, not to come in at all times to the set-apart place inside the veil before the lid of atonement, which is on the ark, lest he die, because I appear in the cloud above the lid of atonement. With this Aharon should come into the set-apart place with the blood of a young bull as a sin offering and of a ram as an ascending offering. He should put on the set-apart linen long shirt with linen trousers on his flesh and gird himself with a linen girdle and be dressed with a linen turban. They are set-apart garments and he shall bathe his body in water and shall put them on. And so if he did not bathe his body in water, then when he entered in to the most set-apart place, it would end in disaster. And so bathing his body in water was a necessary step before he could enter in to the most set-apart place. And I think about the fact that we also cannot enter into the most set-apart place without being washed in water. Water immersion is necessary for us to be able to draw near and enter into that most set-apart place. And then I want to take you over to Numbers chapter 19. We'll pick up with verse 19. And this is going to talk about the fact that when a person touches a dead body or a bone or a tomb or comes into contact with something that pertains to death, that person is unclean for seven days and the water for uncleanness must be sprinkled on that person on the third day and on the seventh day and on the seventh day that person must cleanse himself must wash his garments and bathe in water and then when the sun goes down on that seventh day he is clean numbers 19 beginning with verse 19 
And the clean one shall sprinkle the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day he shall cleanse himself and shall wash his garments and bathe in water and shall be clean in the evening. But the man who is unclean and does not cleanse himself, that being shall be cut off from among the assembly because he has defiled the set apart place of Yah. Water for uncleanness has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. And so if the water for uncleanness is not sprinkled on him, and if he doesn't cleanse himself, if he doesn't wash his garments and bathe in water, then his uncleanness remains upon him. And if he were to enter into the set-apart place, he would defile the set-apart place. And by doing that, he would be cut off from among the assembly. And so that reminds me of Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, where Yeshua said, he who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. Now let's go over into the good news accounts. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 3 and pick up with verse 1. And we're going to see here that Yohanan was called by Elohim to immerse unto repentance. It says, and in those days, Yohanan the immerser, notice he was an immerser, came proclaiming in the wilderness of Yehuda, and saying, Repent! To repent means you turn away from your transgression of the Torah and you turn to the Master in obedience. That was the message of Yohanan. Repent, for the reign of the heavens has come near. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Yeshayahu, saying, A voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of Yah, make his paths straight. And Yohanan had a garment of camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Yehuda and all the country around the Yardane went out to him, and they were immersed by him in the Yardane, in the Jordan River. Notice, confessing their sins. And so confessing of sins is a major component. It's a very important part of being water immersed. In today's modern world, people don't want to talk about how they have transgressed the Torah, how they have sinned, how they've missed the mark. And so oftentimes there's not much confession, but confession of sins is a very important part concerning water immersion. Verse 7, and seeing many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his immersion, he said to them, Brood of adders, who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Bear therefore fruits worthy of repentance. In other words, have a changed life if you're truly going to turn away from your transgression of Torah and turn to the master in obedience, then you need to begin to obey the commandments. We should see the fruit being born on your tree. It's the fruit of a changed life. It's the fruit of righteous living. Bear therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as father. For I say to you that Elohim is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And the axe is already laid to the root of the trees. In other words, judgment is upon you. Every tree then which does not bear good fruit, in other words, does not obey the commandments, is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the set-apart spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the storehouse, but the chaff he shall burn with unquenchable fire. His wheat are those who obey the commandments, and the chaff are those who disobey the commandments. Now let's continue. Matthew chapter 3, the next verse, verse 13, this is going to tell us that Yeshua was immersed to fill or fulfill 
all righteousness. Then Yeshua came from Galil to Yohanan at the Yardane to be immersed by him. But Yohanan was hindering him, saying, I need to be immersed by you, and you come to me? But Yeshua answering said to him, Permit it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And so Yeshua was not coming to be water immersed for the forgiveness of sins. He had no sin. He had not transgressed the Torah. But instead, he was coming to submit himself to water immersion to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, to do what was right in the eyes of his father. To set the righteous example for those who would follow after him. We who follow him must follow him into water immersion because he himself was water immersed. When you think about what water immersion stands for, it stands for death, burial, and resurrection. When Yeshua submitted himself to water immersion, he was embracing the plan of the Father for him to die on the tree for the sins of the world, to be buried and raised from the dead. And so he was saying by submitting to water immersion, I'm going to die on the stake, I'm going to be buried, and I'm going to be raised from the dead. And when he completed that action, then Yah spoke from the heavens, and he said, You are my son, the beloved, in you I did delight. And I believe that he has that same sentiment in his heart for every person who believes upon Yeshua and follows him in this act of obedience of water immersion. Look at Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse 21. And it came to be, when all the people were immersed, Yeshua also being immersed and praying. In other words, when he came up out of the water, the first thing he did was to begin to pray. He started praying. You say, well, what did he pray for? Do we have it in Scripture, his words? Well, no, we certainly don't. It doesn't say in Scripture what he prayed, but we know what he received. Notice what it says. And praying, the heaven was opened, and the set-apart spirit, the spirit of Yah, descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, the beloved, in you I did delight. And so he prayed to receive the set-apart spirit of Yah. He was anointed by Yah. He was filled with the spirit of Yah. And he did all of these things as an example to those of us who would follow him. So we must believe upon him. We must submit ourselves to water immersion. We must pray to receive the set-apart spirit of Yah. We must be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. And then let's continue on. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. And Yeshua, being filled with the set-apart spirit, returned from the Yardain and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being tried for 40 days by the devil. So we follow Yeshua's lead, and we are led by the spirit. And then verse 13. And when the devil had ended every trial... He went away from him until a convenient time. And Yeshua returned, notice, in the power of the Spirit to Galil. And news of him went out through all the surrounding country, and he was teaching in their congregations, being praised by all. And so we see that Yeshua was filled with the Spirit. Yeshua was led by the Spirit. And Yeshua walked in the power of the Spirit. And all of these things happened after he submitted himself to water immersion and came up out of the water and prayed to receive the set-apart Spirit of Yah. That is our example. We must do the same. And then we see in John chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, that Yeshua's taught ones immersed those choosing to become followers of Yeshua. Let's read it. So when the Master knew that the Pharisees had heard that Yeshua made and immersed more taught ones than Yohanan, although Yeshua himself did not immerse, but his taught ones, he left Yehuda and went away again to Galil. And so this tells us that Yeshua puts a very high premium on water immersion because he was making and immersing taught ones. 
he himself was not immersing, but his taught ones were immersing those who would follow after Yeshua. And then let's go to Mark chapter 16. We'll pick up with verse 14. Yeshua commanded his taught ones to go into all the world and immerse. It says, later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he reproached their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he was raised. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. He who has believed and has been immersed. So immersion is right there with belief. If you believe, you'll be water immersed. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved. But he who has not believed, implying if you don't believe, you're not going to be water immersed, shall be condemned. And so we see belief and water immersion constitutes salvation. But if someone doesn't believe, obviously they're not going to be water immersed and those people will be condemned. And then let's go over to Acts chapter 2. We'll pick up with verse 22. And this is going to show us that on Shavuot, about 3,000 new believers were immersed. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. This is Shimon Kepha speaking. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, having been pointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs which Elohim did through him, in your midst, as you yourselves also know, this one, given up by the set purpose and foreknowledge of Elohim, you have impaled and put to death through the hands of lawless men. Him, Elohim, raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was impossible that he could be held in its grip. Verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yeshua, whom you impaled, both Master and Messiah. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart. They were convicted by the set-apart spirit of Yah and said to Kepha and the rest of the emissaries, men, brothers, what shall we do? They knew they needed to do something. And Kepha said to them, Repent, turn away from your transgressions of the Torah and turn to the master in obedience. Repent and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins. Do you want your sins forgiven? Then you need to be immersed. This is what Kepha is saying to them. Repent and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah for, or for the purpose of, the forgiveness of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. In other words, you're going to be filled with the set-apart spirit. When you are water immersed for the forgiveness of sins, you can do just like Yeshua did. As soon as you come up out of that water, you can pray to receive the set-apart spirit of Yah, and you can be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. Look at verse 39. For the promise is to you, the promise of the set-apart spirit of Yah, and to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as Yah, our Elohim, shall call. And with many other words he earnestly witnessed and urged them, saying, Be saved from this crooked generation. Then those indeed who gladly received his word were immersed. And on that day, about 3,000 beings were added to them. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 8, and we'll pick up with verse 5. And this is going to tell us that Philippos, or Philip, went down to Shomeron, or Samaria, and he water immersed those who believed. And going down to the city of Shomeron, Philippos, proclaimed Messiah to them. And the crowds with one mind heeded what Philippos said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice 
and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there came to be great joy in that city. Verse 12, And when they believed, Philippos, as he brought the good news about the reign of Elohim and the name of Yeshua Messiah, both men and women were immersed. And so they heard the word, they believed the word, and they were water immersed. Hallelujah. And then look at verse 26, and this is going to tell us that a eunuch was water immersed by Philippos. It says, But a messenger of Yah spoke to Philippos, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the way which goes down from Jerusalem to Azah. This is desert. And he arose and went and saw a man of Cush, a eunuch of great authority under Kandake, the sovereignness of the Cushites who was in charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Yeshayahu or Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philippos, go near and join him in that chariot. And running up, Philippos heard him reading the prophet Yeshayahu and saying, do you know what you are reading? And he said, how am I able unless someone guides me. And he called Philippos near to come up and sit with him. And the passage of the scripture which he was reading was this, He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of right ruling, and who shall declare his generation? Because his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answering Philippos said, I ask you about whom does the prophet say this, about himself or about some other? And Philippos, opening his mouth and beginning at this scripture, brought to him the good news, Yeshua. So he's bringing him the good news of Yeshua. And as they were going on the way, they came to some water. So obviously, he had taught him about water immersion. And the eunuch said, Look, water, what hinders me from being immersed? And Philippos said, If you believe with all your heart, it is permitted. And he answering said, I believe the son of Elohim to be Yeshua the Messiah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philippos and the eunuch went down into the water. And he immersed him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of Yah caught Philippos away. And the eunuch saw him no more, for he went his way rejoicing. And so obviously Philippos had told him about Yeshua, proclaimed Yeshua to him, told him that if he believed, he could be water immersed, confessing his trespasses, and then he could be filled with the Spirit of Yah. And so he saw the water and he said, look, here's water. What hinders me from being immersed? And he was immersed. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 9, and we'll pick up with verse 10, and this is going to tell us that Shaul, or the apostle Paul, was immersed. It says, and there was at Damasic a certain taught one, by name Hananiah. And the master said unto him in a vision, Hananiah. And he said, Here I am, master. And the master said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and seek in the house of Yehuda for one called Shaul of Tarsas. For look, he is praying and has seen in a vision a man named Hananiah coming in and laying his hand on him, so as to see again. And Hananiah answered, Master, I have heard from many about this man, how many evils he did to your set-apart ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all those calling on your name. But the master said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, to bear my name before nations, sovereigns, and the children of Israel, 
for I shall show him how much he has to suffer for my name. And Hananiah went away and went into the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Shaul, the master Yeshua who appeared to you on the way as you came has sent me so that you might see again and be filled with the set-apart spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it were, scales, and he received his sight, and rising up, he was immersed. Well, it doesn't say specifically how he received the set-apart spirit, but we know that he was immersed, and it may have been just like the way Yeshua received the set-apart spirit. When he came up out of the water, he prayed and received the set-apart spirit of Yah, but we know that he was immersed and filled with the spirit. Look at Acts chapter 22, starting with verse 12. This is Shaul's testimony. It says, And a certain Hananiah, a dedicated man according to the Torah, being well spoken of by all the Yehudim dwelling there, came to me and stood by and said to me, Brother Shaul, look up. And at that same hour, I looked up at him and he said, The Elohim of our fathers has appointed you to know his desire and to see the righteous one and to hear the voice from his mouth, because you shall be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you delay? Rise up, be immersed, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of Yah. I believe that this verse is a call in this hour that we're in. This is Yah by His Spirit speaking to our hearts saying, why do you delay? You believe? It's time to be water immersed. Why do you delay? Rise up. Be immersed. And wash away your sins, calling on the name of Yah. I believe that this passage is resonating in the hearts of many of you who are watching right now. You know that it's time. You know it's time to rise up and be immersed and wash away your sins. And then let's go over to Acts chapter 10. We'll pick up with verse 34. And this is going to tell us that Cornelius and his family were water immersed. It says, And opening his mouth, Kepha, or Peter, said, Truly I see that Elohim shows no partiality, but in every nation he who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. He sent the word to the children of Israel, bringing the good news, peace, through Yeshua Messiah. He is master of all. And then let's look at verse 44. While Kepha was still speaking these words, the set-apart spirit fell upon all those hearing the word. And those of the circumcision, those Jews, who believed and who were with Shimon Kepha, were astonished, as many as came with Kepha, because the gift of the set-apart spirit had been poured out on the nations also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. Then Kepha answered, Is anyone able to forbid water, that these should not be immersed, who have received the set-apart spirit, even as also we? And he commanded them to be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Then they asked him to remain a few days. And so this is an interesting account. We see that these Gentiles were receiving the word from Shimon Kepha. And obviously, while he was speaking, they must have believed in their hearts. Because before he was even finished, they suddenly were filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah, and they had these signs of being filled because it says they heard them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. And when Kepha saw it, he said, Is anyone able to forbid water? In other words, they need to be water immersed that these should not be immersed who have received the set-apart spirit, even as we. And so there's not necessarily a perfect order to it all. 
Yah can do what he wants to. Just when you think you put him in a box, he shows that he can't be put in the box. But the point here is they were filled with the Spirit and they were water immersed. Now, let's go over to Acts chapter 19 and we'll pick up with verse 1. And this is going to show us that Shaul addressed certain taught ones who were immersed into Yohanan's immersion. We'll see what he told them to do as well. It says, And it came to be, while Apollos was at Corinthos, that Shaul, having passed through the upper parts, came to Ephesus, and having found some taught ones, he said to them, Did you receive the set-apart spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not even heard that there is a set-apart spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you immersed? You see, he, he correlates being immersed and filled with the set-apart spirit. They're together. So he wanted to know, you haven't received the set-apart spirit? Then into what then were you immersed? And they said, into Yohanan's immersion. And Shaul said, Yohanan indeed immersed with an immersion of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in the one who is coming after him that is, in Messiah Yeshua. And when they heard this, notice, they were immersed into the name of the Master Yeshua. And when Shaul had laid hands on them, the set-apart spirit came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. And so Shaul wanted to know, have you received the set-apart spirit when you believed? They said, no. We didn't even know there was a set-apart spirit. And he said, into what were you immersed? They said, into Yohanan's immersion. And so he told them they needed to be immersed into the name of the Master Yeshua. And when they had been, he then laid hands on them, and the set-apart spirit came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. Again, being water immersed, you can expect to be filled with the Spirit. All right, now let's go over to Romans chapter 6, and we're going to pick up with verse 1, and this is going to tell us that we are buried with Messiah in immersion. It says, What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin? Sin is the transgression of Terah. Shall we continue to transgress the Terah to let favor increase? Let it not be. No way. We are not to sin. We are not to transgress the Terah to let favor increase. How shall we who died to sin, died to the transgression of Torah, still live in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were immersed into Messiah Yeshua were immersed into His death? We joined together with Him in His death. We died with Him. We died to sin when we died with him. We were therefore buried with him through immersion into death, that as Messiah was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we should walk in newness of life. And so water immersion is a tomb and it's a womb. It's a tomb in the sense that we join together with Messiah in His death. We're buried with Him through immersion. We go down in that water just like He was put in that tomb and that stone was rolled over the doorway. So also we are buried with Him in immersion into His death. That's the tomb. That as Messiah was raised from the dead by the esteem of the Father, so also we should walk in newness of life. When you think about a woman's womb, a mother's womb with a child there, before that child can come forth, before that child is born, before that mother gives birth, that water has to break. And so in water immersion, that one who's died with Messiah and is buried with him under that water has to break forth up out of that water like a child who breaks forth out of the womb after the water has been broken. And that child then has newness of life, is a new creature, is a new human being. We also walk 
in newness of life. Hallelujah. All right, I want to take you over to John chapter 3, and we're going to pick up with verse 1. It says this, And there was a man of the Pharisees, Nacdemon was his name, a ruler of the Yehudim. This one came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no one is able to do these signs you do if Elohim is not with him. Yeshua answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Nectimon said to him, How is a man able to be born when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Yeshua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he is unable to enter into the reign of Elohim. Again, that person who is submitting himself to water immersion dies with Yeshua and is buried in the tomb of the water. And just as a child in the womb of its mother, right before it's delivered, that water breaks, that person then breaks out of that water as a new creature in Messiah. And so if you're going to enter the reign of Elohim, you have to be birthed through the water, just like a child is birthed through the mother's womb and the breaking of the water sack. And then you have to be born of the Spirit and the two go hand in glove. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, everyone. G. Stephen Simons here. You just finished watching part one of Water Immersion, Why It Is Important to New Covenant Believers. And if you feel this video was chock full of useful information and revelation concerning the subject of water immersion, you won't want to miss part two. We just laid the foundation in part one, but in part two, we're going to talk about what actually comes to us as believers when we submit ourselves to water immersion. It will be transformational. So I highly recommend you watch part two. I also want to encourage you to share these videos with your family and friends. And when you do that, you are helping them, like yourself, triumph in truth.